For those of you watching us who haven't heard this yet, you have been involved in subtype thing, uh, Stranger Things. But before we go into more details on that, um, let's explore your background. How did you start working in SDH? Like you explained, like I come from a language background. So my initial degree was a very, it was a very, um, it wasn't theory based like a lot of language degrees perhaps are. Um, we always had the hands-on experience of translation, interpreting, and those different sides of using the language. So because my language was Spanish, I went on a year abroad to Spain. And when I was there, I took part in a course on media localization. And it was a fourth year course. I was all, all I was younger. I wasn't in, in that stage of my degree, but I just, it sounded so interesting to me. So I, t I carried um, out my studies there and I really just fell in love with subtitling and everything that surrounds it. And that's when I decided to um, go and just dive into it really. So subtitling kind of became my full focus for when I did eventually graduate. And I was just luckily enough that like I dipped my toe in after graduation and kind of started working freelance from there. It wasn't actually till after I'd already started working in subtitling that I fell in love so much with SDH. And the initial love for it just, I think it stems from my love of words and my love of reading and under, and that sort of thing, because like the, one of the most exciting parts of it is being able to create emotion and feeling and meaning to someone. And so I think that's where the love comes from. Um, I did then go on to focus on it when I did my master's at Roehampton. Um, I did my dissertation on SDH as well. And basically any research or study I've done since then has been focused on that. And it's just a love and a passion that's grown. Um, I also um, have some people in my life that I've got hearing loss. And I think that was very interesting when working on my dissertation that I can, I can, um, I was kind of able to go to them for opinions and things like that. So yeah, it's it's just a passion of mine and I don't think that I see myself moving away from it. You mentioned that you have this experience um, of being in touch with deaf or hard of hearing people. Uh, I'm wondering, did you get any feedback from uh, the deaf and the hard of hearing community regarding your work? Did anybody contact you about the subtitles you were creating? Um. I think because obviously like we kind of are we, we our names don't really go with our work when you work on SDH it's not like a lot of other titles where the translator name appears at the end so like I kind of just keep myself to myself in terms of what work I've created it wasn't until that I had subtitles that became very popular and people were able to see that it was me that I had conversations with members of the deaf community and it's great because I feel like we have to remember that this product is for them. And although it's great that other people can see these subtitles and are enjoying them and are interested in them, it's a service at the end of the day. And we have to make sure that the people that use in the service are happy with what they're receiving. So putting the deaf community really at the forefront of what it is that we're doing is very important. So yeah, I, I've listened to feedback and I've, I've maybe changed my perspective on certain things from feedback and maybe decided to maybe not go the extra step that I was planning to go because it meant that it took it maybe a bit too far. And so you just I just think you have to take all that feedback because I'm not a deaf person. And I don't have hearing loss. And so the only way that I can know that I'm providing the correct purpose is by communicating with that community.